Welcome to the Lawful Stupid Podcast, episode 16. This time, we have a special guest, so it's not just us four idiots talking. Now we have a respectable member, and that's Bianca. Yay! The (laughs) Rod Fool! You messed it up already! (laughs) No, it wasn't that. It was I was right in the middle, and Devin, yay! I was like, uh No, that was forever ago. Don't blame it on me because you're an idiot. He's excitable. Leave him alone. That's true. This is why he's the barbarian. So, yeah, we wanted to introduce uh, Bianca, because she comes from a really cool podcast that we all listen to. And uh, if you want to say anything, now it's time to do it before we do our stupid intro. Okay, well, I'm excited for the intro, but hey, it's nice to meet everybody, and <laughs> let's get this over with. Oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> I, like, I like her style. Uh, okay, so last time on Lawful Stupid. Take it away, Bianca. <laughs> <laughs> I've got episode 14. <laughs> uh, take play, Kevin. If memory serves, okay. So I don't. I'm not talking in that voice this whole time. Uh, we <laughs> had straight off, voice? and okay. we were talking to my sword, Alaria Foxwood. She was introducing herself. Uh, we're, we head back to the castle. We're going to talk to the Jessicar. Let him know we're going to accept the mission that he's sent us on. Uh, he tells us to go to Yuri, to the ambassador's office, and we're to go to the center ring. Uh, I have that there's a gruff bald man with a uh, giant Armstrong mustache. He's the sable master. He's not as muscular. He gives us the horses and the cart that we're going to use. We run into Findle. Um, kind of space out on the notes there. Uh, we talk about Kenra Ironclaw from Bastonia, Last of Urkbach, capital city, 200 years old if alive. He's the guy. <laughs> I am straight off the page. So w- this is the guy that killed... Uh, Alaria Fox with my cursed sword and so she's telling us about him and hopefully that's how she can be freed of this curse so we're traveling on the loot begins to vibrate that uh that Alex's right, character has can't, no 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 alright look let's talk about this this is not how the intro works where you read off the page if you do it from memory that's why it's funny if you read a narrative it doesn't really I would, do I, would don't, I don't remember what I had for dinner three hours ago. That's why it's funny. You read it off the page doesn't work out. We don't, it let was me just, very informative. Thank you. Let me yeah. just tell you that in this vision, usually I die. But what has happened now is I, I just I stand triumphant and victorious. I'm, I'm just oh, killing people I left. I freaking died. Uh, yeah, you do. Um, That's right. But now I that, about that. But that figure that had killed me previously in the visions, I now... And like knocking him down, and so that's kind of where I have my notes in. So that must be where the episode ends After for sure. Kills me though. And to be fair, my last note <laughs> is send the Firestone. That's good. <laughs> is it though? I don't. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> it's not good because she wasn't even in the episode. Anyways, that's that's uh, that's where we're at. Oh hey. no. Yeah, that's it's close-ish. Um, what I do like i want to point out specifically is that the last thing i remember and i just edited the episode is that shane's character does one of the best bits he's ever done in the entire podcasting of ours and that's the piece um which is gonna be a little bit of spoilers for bianca so i'm not actually gonna do it but it involves a loot and it's i laugh even harder when I had to edit it, and it's so good. And Shane unfortunately hasn't heard it yet. I so don't remember I, about I, it. I don't Are you nervous? It either <laughs> to hear it then? Yes, a little he, bit. Yeah, he should be. But it's amazing. So we're gonna pick up with you guys. You had just um, essentially camped, or you were coming back from camping. You're making your way to Yuri, and I don't know that we discussed this last time. So let's just kind of get that out of the way. Uh, you're staying on the trails right because you have a wagon and horses you're yeah not trying to you're not wanted men anymore yeah. so we have yeah. died. you're not trying to do anything well i mean want is a relative term right like you're not wanted in oxbane right to your knowledge oh god <laughs> <laughs> so, so you guys are kind of making your way through and probably about an hour after travel you guys come upon an overturned wagon in the middle of the road so the horses are no longer there, but the wagon is turned over, so the bridles are everywhere. That's what you guys come upon. You do with that what you will. I will investigate the wagon. All right, cool. Uh, roll me that investigation check. Let's let's. Use I haven't dice. rolled dice in so long. We haven't. That's why. What even is dice? That's, uh, that's a fourteen. Okay, cool. So you roll up on this wagon. 
and you notice that it's not necessarily in any real damage it's not like it's been uh, attacked it's just kind of on its side and on the opposite side of the wagon kind of where the open space is there a small box lays open and in the dirt you see a small ring with a green band laying there it's got a rough gem and uh do you mean just like a, a real quick wisdom saving throw please and okay uh that is a critical failure that is a one <laughs> damn it why do you roll crit ones on things that like i can't like hurt you with um you pick up the ring man like you super pick up the ring is it like a finger ring or what kind of ring are we talking about? It's just like about? a ring that would go on your finger. Yeah, okay. it's like a, a, a piece of jewelry. And you, when you pick it up, you notice it has two small branches made of wood on either side of the uh, gem where it's inlaid, inlaid in the band. Um, yeah, man, you super have this really cool ring. You feel very compelled to have it and be yours. And um, you, Shane Saw and or uh, Kristoff, you feel the need to have your party like fawn over this ring and like kiss it like you're royalty fellas <laughs> check out this ring it is the finest ring in all of the lands I have traveled far and wide and I have never seen such a fine ring just behold its majesty for one, can you stop what you're doing for one minute and behold the majesty of this ring please What's uh, so special about this ring? Look at it! I'm looking at it. Look at it harder. Uh, Alright. Uh, roll investigation. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it oh, with your dice, not your eyes. It's really bad. Uh, do me a favor, uh, Rowan, and roll me a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, sweet. I'm not great at those. This one. I'm counting on. Oh, it's a 19 plus 1, so it's an unnatural 20. Alright, perfect. You feel compelled to try and take that ring from him. Chris, would, would you mind if I see that ring real quick? I would, I would mind very much. Oh, I just want to get a better look at it. You told me to behold its majesty. How can I behold it unless I'm Behold it with it? your eyes, not with your hands. I'm just like I, back and forth because well, mommy and daddy are fighting now, and I'm not sure why. I, I, hold is part of the thing, and I need to hold it. So let me hold the ring. I'm not going to let you hold. It. Let let me have my precious. <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> I've heard this before. I'm gonna step in and push them apart. And as you do that, can you do me a favor? Roll that wisdom saving throw, God. please. Right, this is gonna be real good. Well, he had a natural twenty and he failed. So good luck. Well, that's a natural six. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now you want the ring. Oh, I'm gonna Probably get that ring. Probably more so than anybody else because how shiny it is. Does Fox say kill? Because like it seems like it would be prime time to. Uh, not yet. I think I think she's. Oh, uh, Kristoff. I'm gonna yes. need to. Let, let me see that ring. Now, why does everyone want to see my? Just see it with your eyes, man. You you literally said it's the finest ring, and I'm a little jealous. Well, you should have found it. I will oh, attempt you... to take it from him. Okay. Do me a favor, guys, and roll a strength uh, check. That's not fair. I am good at these. <laughs> Don't you worry. It's fine. He's only going to break Except when you roll hands. a critical one. Oh, uh, I did better than that. I did better than that. <laughs> okay. Don't say what? But I did better Wait, than is that. it a saving throw? Is that... No. Can, can it, it be a saving throw? It's a critical throw? one. And this is very funny as fuck. Okay. So, big Atlas, giant, you know, orc. Half orc. No, you're full blooded, right? Oh, bro. Yeah, that's right. So you come oh, over you and you're you're about ready to manhandle this thing. And I like to think that Kristoff just backhands you like royalty. I do. What a knave. With wearing the ring. And when you backhand oh, him, you want to see it? Take a closer <laughs> look. And so when you backhand him, there's a there's a flash. And you guys all find yourselves laying horizontally on cold, mossy ground. So, when you wake up, each of you lay at the foot of a headstone. And if everybody wants to roll perception checks, we'll like give college. you some... Uh, 19. Okay. 12. 10. You all make it. So, 
as you guys sit up, um, you're in different areas of this graveyard. But you all sit up in front of a headstone. You guys can see to the south of you this shambling creature in tattered robes. It's about seven foot tall, and it's dragging a shovel. <gasps> <laughs> I'm familiar with shovels. I know these. I have a proficiency <laughs> in shovels. And on the northern side, you see an older mausoleum that looks run down. Around this area is a, you know, a standard graveyard-esque fence, so to speak. Um, so you're kind of all pinned in. There's some dead trees. And outside of the fence, it's this thick wooded area. And in fact... Um, it's something we'll post on the socials as well, but I'm going to drop a, a crudely drawn map into the Skype for you guys. Just so you oh, guys please can... do. I would be taken aback if it wasn't crudely drawn. It was like yeah. a really good map. I'd be like, what oh, is that's this? not so bad, dude. Yeah, where'd really you good. get that from? That is from Incarnate, and they are ballers. Incarnate.com, making me look like a pro. Well, Incarnate.com. You're going to love the way you incarnate. I well, guarantee guys, it. Guys, they haven't paid us yet. Mm. Just chill on that. That's true. Oh, okay. All right. So you guys see, um, and each of you uh, are sitting in front of these headstones. What do you want to do? Well, I want to read would... the headstone. Good thing. So, okay. All right, Kristoff. Uh, sorry, Rowan. You read your headstone, and it says the tales of Rowan Legato's death were greatly exaggerated. He found what he was looking for, and in the end, he didn't pass alone. Rosalind was buried with him. They shall be together forever on the other side. And then it reads, your birth date to today's date. I have a question. Mm. How much does it cost to have that much writing on a tombstone? A lot. A lot. That seems pretty... <laughs> Depends on if you know a guy or not. Yeah, pretty expensive. It's true. It's true. I want to go but... next. I want to go next. Uh, okay. <laughs> pick me, pick me. Uh, it says, uh, Atlas, you read your tombstone and it says... The world of Goron owes Atlas Farrier a debt it may never repay. Mm. And then it says, uh, and then it's the birth date that Henry and Teresa gave you to today's date. Mm. And then for my turn, Chris? I'm not going to read my tombstone. Okay. I'm going to quickly scramble on my hands and knees behind my tombstone. I'm going to take up a defensive hiding position. <laughs> okay. 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 I'm going to gesture, wild, gesture wildly for my companions to join me behind the tombstones. Behind your tomb? I'll go behind his tombstone with him. <laughs> okay. It's going to get a little crowded. Confused, I follow. Okay. Uh, so we're now we're going to uh, introduce uh, my pre. Um, you can see these three knuckleheads doing their shenanigans out in the graveyard, and you're peeking in from the mausoleum. So you you have the doors open at this point. This is you. You're introduced. You do whatever you want. Your safety abound. <laughs> All right. I'm just chilling on the steps, um, eating some beef jerky, and I'm just kind of watching these guys roll around on the ground, trying to duck behind cover, um, reading their tombstones, and kind of having some interesting expressions on their face. Um, beyond that, it's just like I'm just enjoying kind of watching these strangers appear here because prior to them, I haven't really seen anybody. Bar the uh, shambling. Great yeah, people. we're not friends though. I don't. I'm not feeling him. <laughs> I wouldn't no. imagine. He's so lonely. I didn't oh, imagine that's a tiny from. sunny personality. Uh, okay, guys, what do you guys want to do next? Listen. Did you see that figure over there? The home with the, the shovel. shambly one. The shambly one. Yes. I have a predisposition to uh, avoid shamblers. <laughs> I have a shambling problem. <laughs> well, I have a problem with this tombstone. It's got to be a lie. I like a shovel. It said a bunch of lies, is what it said. It's like our <laughs> nightmares come true. I, di I didn't read mine. I was busy hiding. I know you probably saved us from the shambly thing. Yeah. So, what's what's the why? Where are we? That's my big question. <laughs> <laughs> I think a graveyard. Yes, what's, I agree. What's the last thing anybody remembers? When you when you ask, uh, where are we, uh, Devin? You hear Foxwood say, "Heaven." <laughs> oh God! Hold, uh, boys, hold on a minute. I'm getting uh, I'm getting something from the fox. <laughs> she says, "We're in heaven." Oh, that's a fucking lie. 
I disagree. Fox, they say you're lying. It's just not true. Cal. Okay, she's back. She's back. Uh, she's not back. Oh, no. Good, good. Like what's, what's the last thing anyone remembers? Uh, I remember you had a really nice ring. Do you still have it? Oh, I look at my finger. It's not there. Curses. <laughs> Do me a favor, roll stealth check, guys. That's, yeah. Appropriate. <clears throat> Alright, getting rid of this dice. That's a five. Ten to <laughs> forever. That is, uh, that is a crit fail. That is a 14. Okay, so, uh... Kristoff, you you hunker down. You had already gotten the plan. You understood. Get behind the tombstone, and then Atlas, you just kind of like hunch over the tombstone, and then like kind of pull Sticking your out. <laughs> yeah. But he like brings his <laughs> eyes down. But that's it, right? Like I can't see you. You can't see me. And then at, at that point, Rowan just starts belligerently yelling about why they're being stealthy, and just you just give it away. And so. The big, uh, <clears throat> mysterious... Oh, that's a baby. Um, the big, mysterious thing looks directly towards you guys. And starts to move towards you with haste. I'm going to interject really quickly. Uh, so we pretty she's watching all of this kind of from her uh, little perch on the uh, beaten upstairs. And when she sees that shambler heading towards... What is your race, Rowan, again? Uh, Half-elf. Okay, so when she sees that uh, shambler uh, shambling towards the half elf, I'm gonna stand up and show. Um, hey, excuse me, do you guys do you guys want some help? <gasps> I don't look, know where we are. Away. Please. <laughs> I'm gonna take a leisurely pace over. Like, how shambling is the shambling monster? Because when I imagine, it, it's, I mean, it's slow. It's slow. Yeah, it's a bigger, slow kind of. Would you say like five feet per second shambling, or could you give it a movement speed? Uh, of, uh... Yeah, I could, I could give it a movement speed, but its <laughs> combat movement speed is different than uh, its creepy yeah. oh, shuddering walk movement speed. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's on its way towards you guys. Uh, I think I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna rush to the, the friendly stranger. <laughs> Which one is that? Is it the shambler? Is it my pre? You decide. <laughs> you decide. Maybe I should just roll that and see which direction you go. <laughs> One of these strangers is friendly, the other one wants to kill me, and I'm not sure either. <laughs> you don't know that yet, yeah. I'll say, uh, uh, strange figure, friend or foe. Oh, me? I, I have a friend. I'm just, I'm just kind of stuck here. What about you guys? I guess, uh, so I guess at this point we're just slowly backing up. From the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like pacing. briskly walking towards you guys. We just woke up here. How long have you been here? Um, three, three nights and three nights, I think. Like, it's nighttime during the day, so you count them twice. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so it's a day and a half? Uh, <laughs> no one's sure. Maybe. This place is terrible already. What's, what's uh, the deal with, with uh, Mr. Bo Shambles? Uh, Mr. Boshan, Bosh, you know his name? That's what I've been calling him this whole time, too. Great minds, tiefling. <laughs> oh my goodness, I haven't met another tiefling in such a long time. How, why? You've got an interesting group. Um, that one over there is taller than me. I don't like that. I'm going to point to the full orc. I'll slump down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I like him a little bit more. Less intimidating. He's so large. Is this shambling mon- I need to kind of visualize our direction. So, like, are we still shambling away from the shambling monster? Right, that's up to you guys. You guys can be heading towards the mausoleum, or you guys can just uh, yeah, be I feel like we're just moving. walking away from the shambling at this sure. point. Yeah. yeah. Risk walk away. Okay, so yeah, I'll lead you guys towards the mausoleum. It's good to note that as he's, like, heading towards you guys, if, you, if you've ever been to any type of cemetery or graveyard, there's pathways that you walk, right? You don't walk over graves. He's not walking over graves. Disrespect. Why well, fight him pathways. immediately? That's that's right. He's all about respect, and I, I like to think that Rowan and Kristoff, as they're walking, zero respect for yeah, that. I'm like I'm like uh, vaulting over tombstones, I'm like leapfrogging <laughs> them. Yeah, I like that. Silent, good. Silently judging the grade of their tombstone. Hmm. Someone was a peasant. <laughs> that was super cheap. Oh god, that's really cheesy. Okay, so you guys make your way through, the great your way through, this, um, through these headstones, and you hit the steps of the mausoleum. I assume you guys go in? That's a good assumption. Yep, I'll lead you guys in. 
I will. I'm. I'm gonna wait out here and, and watch this character. You shouldn't wait out there. It's really <laughs> bad. No, no, I like this. All right. So uh, Devin uh, Atlas elects to stand outside and stand guard. It seems like the other of you guys uh, uh, on the I'm stairs, probably, no, just I'm outside rolling, the door to be noted. For serious, I'm rolling persuasion against you. You shouldn't fucking stand out there. It's really not a good idea. It's also really cold outside and it smells like dirt. So it's up to you. That might I'm be. Closing me. I'm closing the door behind me. I can just open it, right? Like that's. It's not that's locked. Hard. The lock's broken. I'm gonna bar it with Rowan. <laughs> that's not very good. I want somebody to draw that of Rowan just turned sideways, like plank style. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you guys go into the mausoleum, and you uh, see it's very a uh, church pew style, where it's um, rows of pews up to a staged area, and then on the stage there's a pedestal where like a uh, a preacher or pastor or whatever your religious affiliation is would be given a eulogy and it everything looks like it hasn't been touched in a while there's dust things are run down you can see some patchy holes in the roofing that clearly hasn't been maintained um, and the moonlight is kind of bleeding in a little bit from some of those patchy holes. So it's very mixed lighting as you uh, make your way into here. There is a couple of smiley faces drawn into the dust. Um, I've been here long enough to add my own touch to it. <laughs> I love it. All right, uh, so we'll turn around and I'll face the two that entered. Um, so you guys are just kind of hanging out here now? I guess. I don't... What is this? It's a graveyard in a church. Pretty standard stuff. Um, the tombstones are mildly intricate to peasant-like, as your friend noted. Beyond that, I mean, oh, there's. Hey, take a look up front, and I'm gonna point you towards um, like the where like the pastor guy would hang out and do his church stuff. It looks like a stage. Can I uh, roll, I guess, perception to perceive what's still up there? Yeah, oh, um, so here, you actually already know this. Um, you get to choose what's still up there. So mm. there's one thing that you have, but you get to choose what... If you chose to take all other things, that's up to you, and that's only your knowledge. I feel like I've been betrayed. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there is a scroll up there. Um, it is still kind of furled up with like a nice golden ribbon wrapped around it. Um, but like the golden ribbon isn't really tied anymore because I've untied it and then loosely tied it back up. Oh, it looks like there's a, a written thingy. Have you looked into that? I'm sure you have. It's been three days. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I read everything I could read. It was pretty, uh, I mean, take a look at it yourself. Maybe you can see something I've missed. A bunch of Judy Bloom novels are discarded in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta pass the time somehow. Uh, God, I'll read it. I'll pull, out the little, I'll pull out the little reedy stick that you do. And <laughs> yeah, so when you open up the, the scroll, Kristoff, uh, you actually read, um, it says, when the wise often finds himself telling stories, telling tales, he finds himself telling legends that would come true and others that would not. Only the good legends live on, and the others come here to die. The fallen are guarded by Waylon. It is often that unlucky adventurers will find themselves trapped in the care of Waylon. All right, guys, I've, I've deduced what's happening here. In my advanced studies of the Arcane Wars, I came across the, the resting places of all the discarded tales of wind. So those who come in contact with Wynn's artifacts can sometimes find themselves in a world between worlds. I believe that's what's happened to us. We are discarded legends at this point, guarded over by the shambling Waylon. That's really complicated. Uh, so what's, a, what's the Waylon? I think that's Bowshangle. Bowshangle? That's his real name. Oh, why didn't you say so? Oh, Waylon Bowshangle. Shane, do he's, me a he's favor a... and do a perception check now that you're up there reading that scroll for me, please. I would lurb too. Natural 20. Uh, hey, so on that pedestal, we, when you lifted up the scroll, you see some shapes in the dust. You see the scroll where the scroll had been sitting. 
And when you notice that, you see the you, know, you see where the scroll set, and then the undisturbed dust right around it. You notice that there's a uh, a larger thin circle where you can see that there was a, a shape in the dust, like something was sitting there. And then next to it, you see a smaller uh, circle that akin jewelry. I hold my hand up to it because I know what my ring size is. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and I, then I'm going to turn to the tiefling woman who we just met. And I, you know what? Let's do this. No uh, excuse, yeah. it was, excuse me, stranger. Uh, I, I am Christoph Shindo. Uh, what, what can I call you? Oh, hi. I'm May Pri. Nice to meet you, Christoph. I'm, I'm totally digging the horns. You've got like some nice like horn elements to it. It's very nice. True. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like, I've, I do take good care of my own, and my father had excellent Very important. His, oh, his okay. father before him. Long line of beautiful horns in the Shindo family. Excellent. Maintenance is required. It's very important. Yes, you know, so I bound them from a young age, so I kind of get the slick back kind of... We won't, we won't want to bore the normies with all this horn talk, but... <laughs> no, uh, I'm super into this. Like, let's keep going. Okay, so I, you have to buy the buy, horns to yeah, make it shape. As, as in adolescence, um, you'll, you'll begin to, your horns will begin to grow at a more uh, expedient rate. So what you do, if you want to shape them, some people let them go free. Some people, you know, want to do a, like a ram thing. I'm not into that. I do the slick back. So I had to bind them. And it's, it's painful at first, but you learn. Well, absolutely. I once saw somebody, his horn was like a twisty, like two of them were like twisted together and almost looked like he was a unicorn. He might have had a thing for other things, but who knows? That's, I, I dig it, actually. Um, oh. If you have his contact information, if you could just. <laughs> yeah, I uh, know. I'll let you know. Let's uh, let's yeah. get out of here first. But um, so your, your friend over there, the one that's kind of uh, lingering by the pews. Uh, hi, what's your name? Rowan. I, I do things, I guess. I'm here. Hello. <laughs> Do you have any instruments like strapped on you? Anything that would draw my attention? Absolutely. He I, has a lute. <laughs> okay. Actually, a nice quick um, summary of what you look like, look like too would be um, really helpful for me. Yeah, we haven't done that in a while. Uh, before we do that, uh, Atlas, the the Wayland that we've now discovered, you're getting real like scary close. You're hearing oh, yeah, the I forgot you were <laughs> you're hearing the moans of him and the drag of the shovel against the dirt as he gets within like 30 feet of you and he's starting uh, to pick up speed friend of foe and then uh you you hear back and he picks up speed heading your direction uh foxwood it, it, how do you read this <laughs> and you hear Go figure. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the door and just see inside. Like, hey guys, it's getting real close. Uh, what do you think we should do? Come inside, close the door, and let's bar it with some of these pews. Okay, it sounds good. All right, and so I will go ahead. You, you, I will you. come in and just, just, just start grabbing just ones and twos and throwing them into the front of the okay. door. As you as you bar, barricade the first one, um, you hear a soft, uh, or not a soft, but a steady of you know a shovel being tapped against the door and then you hear him shuffle away he's polite um yeah so let's do uh the introductions it's been a while since we've done physical introduction we have a guest so let's just go ahead and do that uh atlas why don't you go first yours i think will be the easiest Am I introducing myself as Atlas, or am I just describing it as Devin? Right now, we're just going to do physical Both? description. No. Yes. You, can, you yeah. can introduce yourself. I'm me. actually one and the same. <laughs> this so, so I'm much. a white male, 29 years old. I'm currently wearing a tank top and headphones for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but my character, he he is um he's six six six. He's he's just a full blooded orc, but he's he's a um, a pale orc. Uh, so he was tossed away cursed but the the look is he's hulking he doesn't wear any like he's shirtless he has like some leather uh, shoulder pad type things um, just almost just almost nothing and he has a, a giant sword which is a Larry Foxwood who's the cursed sword he's bound to him and then Willow his giant axe and so those just kind of cross each other in the back carry a couple uh, um, spears as well and then that's 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 it Hulk tusks have big tusks um, it's almost like I have to sleep a certain way so they don't block my breathing. Um, <laughs> just got a machine for that. 
I'm, spell. I'm a gentle giant. I was raised by by humans, so no, when I was cast. With... Not like okay. a history <laughs> lesson, just a physical. No, I'm just saying so. Physical description. No, you summed up. Wait, wait. What color is your hair? Very important. Oh, jet black. Okay. Very orc like. He dyes it with uh, soot from the foundry every day. He's really just a platinum blonde, but he couldn't <laughs> deal with that. I can't take it. Do you dye they your eyebrows as well? Fun, but they don't. I burn them off. I don't have eyebrows. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> they are oh. gone. I attribute that to my forced. being single constantly. Kristoff <laughs> <laughs> and Rowan. Next. <laughs> Christoph and Rowan? Or. Or, or, or. or. Okay, so Christoph, he's a tiefling man. Uh, he has um, just uh, uh, almost uh, copper colored skin and he has horns. Um, he also is, uh, he has a bit of a draconic race to him as a dragon sorcerer. So he's covered with some with some uh, silver scales, which he covers most of them um, on his body, but you can see the ones under his eyes, like an overtiled metallurgist. Um, I wear uh, gloves and I wear a, a large coat, a regal coat. It is a totem of my standing once as a noble, a fur-lined collar. With uh, underneath, I'm wearing this 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 uh, beautiful blue robe uh, emblazoned with stars, which I found as an arcane of uh, war relic. And I look like that most. There's a picture now, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa's can't see that, but so I keep saying words. I have horns that are slicked back, and uh, you know, because because we talked about the binding of the horns, yes. Uh, and and my hair is slicked back as well. And um, uh, overall, I would say uh, ab about an eight point five out of ten. There's always room for improvement. Frank is very highly of himself. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I can see eight. That's a good number. That's a good that's number. A, on the it's higher a, end. It's, it's, an, a, it's an act. Themselves. Well, five is exactly average. We've talked about this at length. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Do you have a tail as a tiefling? I, uh, you can't see one. Awkward. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> there. Probably I just keep somebody. it in your pants. <laughs> Probably not something. Hey, well, so like, keep I it in your pants. Land of Silence, which is a winter mountainous town, so you can't have a hole in your trousers for a tail. So maybe they were removed at birth. I don't know. I never thought uh, about it. Okay. <laughs> There's a whole new lore of like uh, tails, tiefling tails being your new elephant tusks now in my world. <laughs> and oh, just gosh. being docked <laughs> as, as a, a royal. It's actually, uh, but I'm, only I'm, for I'm... the Kingdom of Silence. Yeah. There's a human rights campaign. Well, a tiefling rights campaign is uh, kind of undergoing now. So to is that Tita stop then? This, yeah, to stop this barbaric uh, process of removing tiefling's tails at birth in silence. It's a backwards culture sometimes, you know, you get on the mountains. And I'm done talking, Rowan. Anytime you want to stop me. Oh, please, oh. for the love of God. God, I would never stop you. You just you just keep going. Like, it's delightful. <laughs> but no. <laughs> no, um, just half elf. Um, as Rowan would be handsome, or Rowan would be pretty, Christoph would be handsome. Like, Christoph is a handsome man. Rowan is. Is this pretty. about Rowan or Christoph at this <laughs> I point? Can't that out. You know what? I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge. Don't Rowan. worry about what Rowan and Christoph do in their three days of drunken chess playing. But <laughs> no, just blonde hair, super long, very red coat and red Captain Hookish hat but like does his best to just look like a normal person trying to keep his ears tucked up under the hat that's what the hats uh, are okay mm -hmm. I describe Rowan as more hat than man mm. yeah very much more hat than man <laughs> what color is the hat red also to match your coat exactly like Excellent. red skis mm -hmm. <laughs> okay cool so what's uh, Maypree look like? Oh, yeah, I guess I should say that too. Yeah, um, that's fair. <laughs> so I'm a, I've got like a light purple, uh, dark in some spots tone to my skin color. I've also got the same style of horns um, where they're kind of slick back a little bit. Um, I've got like long, curly, poofy hair that depending on the day, sometimes curlier, sometimes it's more like an afro. Um, for this adventure, I'm going to be wearing kind of like a leather top with my midriff exposed and then like loose fitting pants and some really well worn traveling boots. I've got my glaive strapped to my back, which like is a long pole arm with like like a pointy fun spear bit on the end, um, but like it's slicey on both sides. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I've got a couple of like packs with me that like, I have some uh, gambling dice I carry some maps some food I always carry beef jerky with me it's a bit of a favorite so if you ever want to share food I'm always I've always got some oh, we have hot biscuits 
That's our podcast staple. I, I do want to say that I'm now, the next time I uh, build an NPC, it's going to describe weapons of... It's slicey on both sides because I absolutely good. love that description. That's yeah, good. that's great. <laughs> Not good with weapons. That was my best descriptor. No, I, I love that. I'm definitely going to have an NPC being like, oh, check it out. It's slicey on both sides. It's great. Perfect. It's my axe. It's slicey on one side. Yep. Uh -huh. Okay. So now, uh, Kristoff, you just noticed that there's some missing items from the uh, podium. Uh, what do you want to do? Yes, uh, Maypuri. Uh, would there happen to have been anything else on this podium prior to our arrival? Maybe. And I'm well, going to look around kind of shiftily. How maybe? We're talking like 50% <laughs> chance or where are we at? Yeah, like 60% chance? So maybe a ring? Maybe. I Do me really... a favor, uh, Shane. Go ahead and roll me another wisdom saving throw when she says maybe. Okay. If you insist. Uh, that is a sixteen, gentlemen. Sixteen. Uh, you're you're gonna start feeling pretty possessive when she says maybe. Yeah. So I really need to find that ring. I don't I think, think I can help I think, you with that. I think it's our ticket out of here. You can look. I'll leave you to search this place. I'm going to go stand um, by that pew by the door, and you can do your thing. Mm. I'm going to shuffle away, but I'm still kind of looking a little shifty at you now. <laughs> yeah. Feeling, I'm feeling some shift. Um, I, I'm going to do a... a, a I, I, I'm, I'm feeling possessed by this ring, right? Like oh, I yeah. It's definitely like strong, my preciousness. This, yep. Yeah, so I'm like underneath the pews i'm like digging i'm like an I'm investigation check for me frantically please. searching for this ring yep. uh that is a 19. so you go through this uh mausoleum you actually kick over the podium hoping there's something under it and then you start looking under all the pews flipping pews on their sides like it's you're becoming quite manic as you don't find this ring in the mausoleum you you do not find it and you find no other evidence of it other than it used to be on that podium or you believe it used to be on that podium and this is very not christoph like what is he looking for i don't Your know a little odd yeah, yeah. Well, yes <laughs> i guess I mean, i'm just like flipping shit <laughs> ah where the fuck's all right <laughs> no, normally normally he has a, a very high decorum this is very uncharacteristic of him. Uh, uh, Chris, Christoph. Yes. What? Uh, I'm not sure. Would you, would you like some help? I would give every finger on both of my hands, except my ring finger on my right hand. I need that I one. I would have just ring. taken a yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. And I will start also. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm I've looking looked, for yet. I've I'm looked everywhere. It's no, it's no use. The only person possibly have this ring that other teeth not you know not the, not the good one that one the shifty one with the eyes I'll turn and look at her and like shrug. <laughs> do you, do you have is there a mirror uh, are you asking if there's a mirror like a, a, like a like a mirror like your, your reflection oh um there's some broken glass by the window oh all right Christoph are you looking in the broken glass is that the tiefling you're talking about? Are you asking me if I'm the pot of the kettle? Is that what we're doing right now? <laughs> that that slightly might be what we're talking about right now. Really? I'm trying to trying to gauge you right now. You're not acting you. I just I, I really need this ring, guys. I don't think that I can impress what on ring? Like, I remember a ring, but there's not a ring now. It's gone. Well, I looked on the podium, and there was a ring-shaped hole in the dust, and also another shaped hole in the dust for a different thing. But there was a scroll, and that I, mostly I just I would like to have this. It would make me very happy if I had the ring right now. Is it completely possible that it wasn't a ring? Something oh, you else think that was round? Like a, it's like an allegory for the evil inside all of us, not really a ring. <laughs> Wow. No, I don't think it's any kind of gory. <laughs> oh, Maypri, do you have any idea of what my friend speaks about? 
Uh, nope, absolutely nothing. No idea. I've just been here um, watching both shambles and eating food and digging up graves. So I, okay, I'm so... not a, a super smart orc, but yeah, based on what my friend says, the, the dust that was there and the shape that's missing, it's recent that uh, that item has gone missing. You were here when we arrived, and uh, Mr. Shambles cannot get inside this building, presumably. So that leads me to believe that you have the item my friend so desires. Can you roll? Uh, hmm. And you do like to persuade me because I'm not feeling yes. it. Yes, I will. I mean, use your words as well as a roll if you're gonna do that. But words. Nope, prefer, just but... dice, just numbers. Just I'm just looking at the items. I'm though. just gonna roll and not say anything. Be, be, yeah. Give me statistical facts. It's a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not persuading. Okay, no, no, try to persuade me. <laughs> I'm confused. I thought I just did that, and the role was to see if it affected you or not. Well, you know I, what? That's fair. I like this. No, I like that. I like that that was his persuasion. Just, you must have it. Right? Huh? <laughs> Go. Go. You don't right. have to roll. You're not persuaded. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just kidding. I don't know who has it. <laughs> <laughs> it might be me. I do myself a it. Wait, hold on. Shut shut your cake hole. Hold on. Did you dig up graves, right? Yeah, yeah, it was one way to pass the time. Did you find your own grave? Is there a grave with your name? You know, I haven't been to the far back and that was where I landed. So I, I just, I'm not really, I'm afraid of finding out how I died because I'd like to think I took down a bunch of people with me, but they're not here. So I don't know why I'm here and they're not. No, the gravestones are a lie. There's no way that there's any truth to them. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> don't oh, even. Oh. There's no I way. I... What'd you say? Well, it said people owed me a debt or something. I presume I'm dead, but they owe me a, a giant favor. I mean, that... the dead part's kind of lame. At very least, it's 50 50, because mine's a total lie. <laughs> For the record, I don't think we're actually dead. This is just yeah, kind of like a friendly place with a strange man. A strange, um, Bo Shambles. He's just strange. Hmm. Uh, I hope you're right. Strange. You uh, know what? Maybe he's friendly. Let's go talk to Bo Shambles. So, mm -hmm. uh, Mapri, as, as you guys are having a conversation, that other Friend. item you have mm -hmm. is starting to get hot to the touch. Wait, the, the which other one? Item. I... Okay. Because you, you had the scroll you left. So the other one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that one's starting to get hot wherever you're... Wherever it is on your person. Okay. Um, so as I'm kind of chatting with you guys, uh, I start to, like, itch my head a little bit. As, as I mentioned, I've got a lot of hair on my head. Um, <laughs> it's not hard to hide things in there. Uh, so mid-conversation, I'm just going to start digging into my hair. And I'm going to whip out something gold and toss it onto the ground. Oh, I found what's, it. What's this then? <laughs> it's not a ring. You can, yeah. I mean, it's hot. Don't touch so it. You're going to burn yourself. For the I'm definitely players. not going to touch she it. She tosses to the ground a crown. Did I just set off somebody's hot alarm? Is hot pockets are done. That's how hot it was. <laughs> That's how hot, That's how hot it was. <laughs> Real life, it sets off smoke alarm. So she tosses a, a crown to the ground. I will pick it up. I'm used to hot things working at Forge, so see how hot it really is. It is not hot to you at all. I will look at it. Like, can you describe it to me? You said a crown, but like, what does it got jewels? Yeah, or... It's a very simple, a simple crown. Like, just you would just sit it on top. It's almost like a golden band, but you can tell from the little arches that are around on the top side of it. Well, I mean, whether Atlas can tell or not, a normal human could tell that the little um, I'm not arches. A human. Would, yeah, what about um... a normal orc? Yeah. Oh, probably racist. not. I don't know. Probably not. They might think it's like a bracelet or something. Um, <laughs> I do that. Just put it on my forearm. <laughs> I mean, it's, a it's, bracer. it's, it's fine to get, it's kind of good until it gets up to your, your giant bicep and it starts to get tight. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Christoph, is this, I don't, this is too big to be a ring, but uh, are you feeling anything for, for this? Uh, and I will take second. it off my ring uh, and hand it back to him. Let me communicate with the magical energies that persist throughout my being. Uh, I oh, hate it when he check. does this. Is he okay? Uh, yeah, you can roll No, I'm going to do that. He just does this uh, sometimes. It makes so him happy. Is... I don't. I don't know. Oh, okay. No, we can <laughs> entertain they... him. I don't mind. Yeah, yes. it's it's better for him. I like okay. her. 
That's a 16 on my arcane Uh You can feel uh, a heavy dose of magic coming off of that, but you don't know what it does. Uh, Devin, you need to do me a favor. Roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Chris, can anyone send well. me a different d20? Uh, okay, let's see. No, he's going to crush it. Not, no, roll 15. Do me a wisdom saving throw, please. Oh, no. Well, that's terrible. You both feel the call for the ring as well. Mine is five. What well, if that means? You super want that ring. Oh, God. You're I starting to get jealous ring. of Kristoff's connection with the ring, despite the fact that he doesn't have the ring. Oh. Kristoff, just to catch you up, they both failed wisdom saving throws for wanting the ring. Oh, I figured. So well, now I'll we take, all have a... I'll take the... the crown i had just throw it behind me because i do not care thing for it i thought you handed it to Kristoff. Mm -hmm. well i take it from him forcefully and, and i throw, throw it behind okay. me well once again i slap you with it i think we've established that <laughs> that's the pecking order no, you take things a... from me i slap you with them <laughs> Kristoff, you might not know this but i used to be a jeweler i could probably tell you who made that if you just give it to me this this Can crown praise it? it garbage good i'll take it okay so you've got the crown now <laughs> Good. Are you gonna uh, wear it? Please. Yes. On top of your hat. On top of your hat. Okay. <laughs> Put it on top of my hat. Do me a favor. Uh, Beautiful. Go ahead and roll a wisdom saving throw for me, please. Actually, let's do constitution for what this is. Oh, that's not even much better. That's a ten. Hey, uh, Rowan, you can't tell lies. I can't tell oh. lies. You can't tell lies. <gasps> now, that being said, I can't talk then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't. Say. You won't know this. Until the first time you speak, though, because you don't internally know that. Hey, Rowan. Mm-hmm? Apropos of nothing. <laughs> Tell me I don't know what that means. Love is. Tell you who what? Your truest love is. Hey, I will me. let you I will let you do a... Um... Rowan Legato. <laughs> I mean, that, I think that fits. Um... I, I don't know. I don't think that's... Anyways, all right. So, yeah. <laughs> you're telling truth. Maypri, uh, I believe there was one more item of import that you are not telling us about. I don't know what you're talking about. I've just been hanging out here, drawing... I, I, I might have drawn that circle over there. Um, as you've noticed, I've got some um, personal artwork around in the dust in this building. Do you was... mind if... <laughs> Go ahead. Never mind. No, you do, yeah. Could I put my hand into your hair and search for any other items you may have hidden in there? I think it's very rude for I wanted to ask, ask that. I just would not do it. I'm not a rude man. I just, I feel like you are hiding something from us. Here's, okay. Let's well, arm can... wrestle. No, no, no. Let, let's, let's arm wrestle. If you win, I'll allow it. Oh, okay. Don't, this is don't go, don't go for it, Atlas. All right. there's, there's nothing to be gained here. <laughs> I, I so I like to imagine and correct me if I'm wrong that Atlas you like pull the pedestal up or the the podium up and like make it a, like a stage for the arm wrestling situation. Absolutely. All right. Uh, and I draw I also draw a line where our elbows are going to touch and then two in the other side where we have to cross. So it's like an H. So where the elbows go and then where we have each other to cross. Roll a, a strength contest. You're going to win because these dice so, have been not a Atlas. Line. Devin, there's something you can do for flavor to help you out here. What you do is you take your cap, you and turn you it go, backwards, and then you go, go over, over the top. top. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll let, I'll let you think you're winning. <laughs> All right, uh, that's a t unnatural 20 for me. I got a natural one. <laughs> oh, okay. No. I break a both uh, yeah. <laughs> Collapsing to the no, ground. No. So, so she uh, over the you guys start it um, together, and Atlas, you're definitely doing that where you're like I'm letting her win, and then you're like time to turn on the ch the the strength, and you just smash her hand into the podium, and it's like the podium cracks under the weight of the uh, arm wrestling match. Damn, do I take any damage? Nah. <laughs> All so right. I strong. Wait. I give Kristoff a gold. I was betting on Maypre. <laughs> <laughs> I have it now. Thing I have. Wow, I don't normally lose these. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, search away. 
Um, roll an investigation check, I guess. This is what I'm doing. So. Don't pantomime. It's an audio medium. <laughs> yeah. Pantomime. It's seven. Okay. Um, I don't think that's good enough to find it. If she hit a crown in there, you're done. You're not finding a ring with a seven. Um, Alaria says to you, Atlas. What about the gravekeeper? Oh, you know what, guys? Alaria just. And I'll take my hands out of your hair. Like, I feel like I start talking with my hands in your hair, and then I'm like, oh, sorry. And I'll try to, like, fluff it back up or something, like, back to where it was. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, I, I believe you. Um, I'm sorry that I had to come to that. Thank you for the arm wrestle. No one has done that in a very long time. But what about what about the, the gravekeeper, him, the, the Shambly man? What if he was here before, person. my pre? He's, he was here when I arrived. He maybe I mean there's a reason why he's here. He's protecting something. Maybe that's the item. There's only two people I trust in this world. Turinga the guardsman. And oh, shit. He would never he would never steal your <laughs> right probably kill him. Okay. Bush Bush Shamble scares me a little bit. More than a little bit. Why. He creeps me the heck out, frankly. For the three days and the three nights that I was here, he never dug a single grave. I, I felt like I was doing his job for him. I was mostly just looking to pillage some graves. So I was digging graves, but he, he didn't even help. Did you find anything cool? Bones. Golden teeth. Do you want some? Mm. And I'm going to put my hand yes. into my pocket and bring out a handful like of golden Absolutely. teeth. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, I want to make a necklace out of them. That's, I love arts and crafts. I am disgusted. <laughs> Some of us weren't born of money. Some of us were fucking born poor. And now you're going to have a, 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 a necklace made of golden teeth? I'm going to look like one of your aristocrat fe fellows. <laughs> you can make bracelets too. They jingle when you walk. Yes. <laughs> you like jingling things. I like this Oh, one. yes. And there's the extra, you know, added, you know, you get that sheen right off the, the tartar that's built up around them. It's really, mm. <laughs> quite tasteful. Mmm. <laughs> All what right. if we go talk to, to Bo Shambles? I mean, I don't know what he would say other than, oh, oh he said that do, to me earlier, do, but... Do you speak super freaky Corpsman? Sometimes. I speak, I speak Elvish and Dwarven and Draconic and Common. I don't speak super creepy Corpsman. I um, actually took right, that. That's good call. Rowan, you speak that? I super don't. Oh, you look like the type that would. I would. Hey, you can't lie. Don't. You can't lie. <laughs> That's why he confessed. Yeah, I can. Oh. I, like can to think, I like to think that he resists it enough to like lie, and then he goes, nope, super can't, super can't. I can't do that, I lied, it was a lie. Everything's fake. The pin is blue. Royal blue. 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 <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, so you guys want to go after the Shambler? Yes. We'll go visit uh, both Shambles. I don't. It's uh, we're tech. murdering him dead, right? Have we ever done that? Are we talking to him or murdering him dead? You guys, I mean, you've talked to him more than I have. I asked him how his date was when I arrived, and he tried to hit me with the shovel. That was pretty much the extent of our conversation. Atlas is pretty much the master of shovels. Uh, I, I, maybe... <laughs> did, uh, did, uh, actually, Rowan, you brought several of my shovels, did you not? I bought... No, I didn't buy any. They were free. <laughs> oh, oh, I said brought. You, you had them with... Oh, wait. What do you mean they're free? I like, I like <laughs> that that's his point. Not that, no, I have them. It's, oh, no, they were free, man. Like, let me stress that to you. <laughs> Just to let you know, they were free because they're so good. It's like a promotional. World deserves can't it, lie. Right? Everybody, right? May Paris, the whole world deserves the shovels, right? I would love a shovel. I, I mean, I, I, I was using my hands to dig the graves before, and I'm going to show you no, my here's, fingertips. Here's a not shovel. Nice. You can have it. It's super nice. You really have as many as you want for the garbage. And Alex, Alex made it. They're just backstory, amazing. Bianca. I, I'm like, you know, supposed to be like this master smith, but like I always build up my story too much. So Dwayne's like, no, you work in a shop and you make shovels and that's it. And I've listened to the, no, I've listened to the, yeah. <laughs> so you, yeah, you just make shovels and they don't sell very well. well and so when you say they're free, I go, well, like, I don't know. That's a revelation now. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time oh, I've ever heard free. they're free. They sell like hotcakes. Oh, they do yeah. sell like hotcakes. You get one free with every purchase or not. Like, if you just show up. <laughs> yeah, you just don't want to carry it because it's... I mean, um, yeah, let's go get the guy. 
Okay, yeah, so every, guys... does, does anybody need a shovel? <laughs> Alright, so you guys make your way out, and as you guys make your way out, um, Waylon is sitting there waiting at the steps, like patiently waiting for you guys. I'm gonna poke my head out. Hey, Waylon! Go oh, shambles! Uh, nice shovel. And he like raises it, and you see the hooded form of his head look at it, and roll initiative. <laughs> oh shit! Oh gosh! Got me again. Oh, Man, that's not too this terrible. is a good start, boys. Dude, I got a two. Atlas has got a two. All right, Atlas. That's a fourteen. Two. Rowan. Fourteen. Kristoff. Mapri, what did you get? Thirteen. Oh, well, look at you guys. Just everybody's on point except for Atlas. Mm -hmm. Changing dice again. I have to remember what I can That's do. That's your problem. You're not loyal to your die, okay? No, and so you're not loyal just, to me. It just, it, no, they, nobody wants to be the sloppy seconds, and you're just changing up dice every time they fail you. Well. You know what? Hold on. What's the stipulations with sloppy seconds? Like, it's that bad, really. <laughs> yeah. He, every time he rolls a die... They feel bad. I mean, I would feel bad. Like, there's no faith yeah. there. You can have all these side dice out there. <laughs> Look, right. just because there's a piece of pizza with a bite taken out of it doesn't make it a not good piece I mean, of that's, pizza. That's different. We're talking about pizza. Pizza's always good in any form, as long as it's not rotten. And even then, sometimes. You just scrape that white stuff off. I'd love to do comedy. Glad you're still alive. Let's <laughs> fight. All right, so... Um, no effort of his own. He's going to... Uh, yeah, that's right. It's total luck. He's gonna rush up and he's going to get in. Uh, so let's do um, combat settings. Doors, Atlas, you're in the front. Obviously, you, you stuck your head out. Other three, yeah. you guys can choose uh, within like 15 feet of Atlas where you want to be inside the mausoleum. 15 feet out. behind him for sure. Hope. Oh. I'm right next to Atlas. All right, I like it. Yeah. And Kristoff, I assume you're next to Rowan? I'm, I'm 10 feet back, sure. Okay, cool. Um, so he, like, moves way swifter up than you would have expected him to do, and he's going to walk up, and he's going to take an attack against you, Atlas. Uh, I think that's going to miss an 8. Any modifiers? Or is it 8? I mean, that, that 8 is the roll. Oh, no, um, yeah. Okay, and then he's gonna attack again with the shovel, but this one he's gonna aim at Mapri. Or Mapri, sorry. Fucking motherfucker. Alright, so he comes across sideways, horizontally, and both of you just duck at the same time. <laughs> Whoppa! Good synchronized Three, ducking. Three, two, one, <laughs> one duck! duck. <laughs> yep. Uh, Rowan, it is your turn. I will cast Vicious Mockery. Uh, remind me how that plays out. Dude, do you really have to do that to me right now? It's been like a month. It's your spell! <laughs> God! It's a, it's I... a saving throw. So yeah. It's a saving throw. And, right. if, and if he fails, it's a save or suck. Okay, wisdom saving throw. He's not mm -hmm. great at these. But he is today. Does a 15 cut it? Oh my god, it beats it by one. Oh, so close. Alright, so you, what do you say to him? Um, I say can't you're lie. not worth. Can't lie. You're not worth the dirt to bury you in. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So nothing happens. So this is safer suck. Um. Damn it. Free, it's your turn. Well, hold on. Okay. As you a bonus do... action. Oh, okay. Go on. Uh, I'm gonna give May Pre Bardic Inspiration. And how are you gonna inspire her? What song are you going to sing? <laughs> Uh, it's the original song called Fuck This Guy. <laughs> is that like a, is that a 5, 6, 7, 8? What's the tempo there? Oh, it's a 3, 7 for sure. Okay, I'm glad you had that because I don't know anything about music. Um, so, perfect. Uh, Mapri, it's your turn. Alright, I'm going to cast uh, Ancestral Guardian. Um, I'm trying to figure out where my stats are. I put them down somewhere. Um, so maybe I won't You do and that. Atlas, you and Devin are like... <laughs> <laughs> perfect oh, matches okay. for life. Both <laughs> barbarians, both. I have stats somewhere. Somewhere I have these character things. 
No lie, I'm gonna feel while she's looking for it. Today, I left my papers at work again. Please. But, but I sent it to you, so I have digital, and you're proud Stop of me. Stop being You, you, just you don't know, play at like, work! The spell dies. I'm looking at it right now. You don't play at work. You don't play. Alright, cool. So, uh, Mapriya, it's your turn. Yes, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and cast Ancestral Protectors. Um, what this is, is I'm going to summon uh, basically a decoy. Um, and the person I summon is a small girl. Um, she's human, she's wearing like tattered clothes, but she's got like this feral look about her. Um, and due to the summoning, um, she's just kind of like the shifty black and gray image. Okay. All right, and sounds good. That's pretty much all I do. I'm just going to hang out and summon that, and it's going to kind of bait um, Bow Shambles. Okay. Okay. That, all right. Uh, is there anything else you want to do on your turn? I'm going to cheer her on. That's about it. Cheer on my decoy. Okay. Hmm. All right. Um, next up in the order is going to be Kristoff. Uh, so for a bonus action, I'm going to turn to uh, Atlas and I'm going to say, "Sweep the leg. He skipped leg day." Uh, <laughs> and I will thus uh, confer advantage to him on his next attack. Right. And uh, then I'm going to cast Frostbite. Oh. So a Constitution saving throw, please. Oh yeah, he's good. There. Now I know. Uh, I mean, he's a big old guy. If he didn't. Pull that together. Uh, let's see. I don't think it's going to. 13? No, that's not going to make it. Okay, so what happens to this bad boy? Uh, so, first thing, he's going to take some damage. Uh, he doesn't like that. He's going to take four cold damage. No, I'm not so about that. And he has disadvantage on his next attack action. Okay. Cool. Uh, Alright, so. No. You cast your spell and, uh, what was it, Frostbite? Frost touch? A Frostbite. Frostbite. And so you, you say your magical words and you see the frost form over his body and take some alleys and kind of shudders back and then that takes us into Atlas's turn. Uh, okay, so I will, uh, pull out Foxwood and say, it's time. Like, here's your thing. You get and to do the thing. Internally, you, you hear, like, this squeal of joy <laughs> fill your ears. All right, so uh, two handed, I will attempt to attack this foe. I get advantage on that. It's critical fail, so that's good. Um, and then that is a 16. Okay, uh, let me. Yeah, so you take your sword and you bring it across and he, uh, the monster goes to bring up the shovel to deflect but is a little too slow so you strike him across the chest. Uh, how much damage do you do? Uh, okay, so so let's see the great sword, maybe 12. As a 4 plus 3, 7. So you do 7 damage. 7 good damage. Okay, yeah, so you, again, you take that weapon across his chest, and you unleash seven damage. Uh, and that will be the end of my turn. Okay. All right, uh, next in the order is going to be the big guy. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how to resolve this. I think thematically, he's gonna, he's gonna attack the illusion, right? Mm -hmm. um, because you didn't actually attack, but the illusion doesn't exactly have like an AC. No, not so, at all. It's uh, intangible mostly. Okay, so him not getting a crit one is going to be enough for him to figure out that that's an illusion, and then he's going to pick a different target. But provided he doesn't roll a crit, one. Um, no, he doesn't. So he's well, he has disadvantage. Oh, that's fair. Good looking out. Okay. Um, still not. Okay. No, it's going out. So he swings across and manages to connect with this uh, creepy ring s type girl that I'm picturing in my head. And when the shovel goes right through, he kind of gets this idea like, oh, hey, that's that's not great. And um, then he's going to attack Maypri because he can kind of work out that that's 
that's kind of where he's feeling that came from. Okay, so I'm still a little new to D&D, um, but something I've come across quite often is, um, I don't know what the word is, but like when somebody's doing something, like say you drop your weapon and then somebody else can take advantage on that. What is that called? Um, um, I don't know that that's like a mechanic. So if somebody drops their weapon- Are you talking about the help action? You should, nope. Like let's say- a reaction. There's a word and I've heard yeah, it a lot. This. What are you trying to do? We'll, we'll make it happen regardless of those rules or not. Or we'll fit them into the rules. I basically want to take advantage of. So he's attacking. So that was kind oh, of like his first attack move. Of attack of opportunity. Yes, yes, okay. that's the one. So, all right, let's have that conversation. Attack of opportunity. The way that works is when you exit somebody's um, their threat range is when you can, or when somebody exits your threat range, you can take an attack of opportunity. Because he's face to face with you essentially, and he just struck something next to you. He's not actually moving out of the way or prompting an attack of opportunity because he's not exiting your threat. If he just moves around you, it still doesn't prompt an attack of opportunity in D&D 5e um, just because he's not exiting your threat range. He still is aware. No, so I think, Mayfrey, was it your, is there, is there a range on your uh, Ancestral Guardian? Nope. So if she made it 10 feet away, right? Or if she made it like behind him, yeah. he'd have to turn and move to attack. And he has to attack that. So I think she was trying to prompt an attack of opportunity from the get go. So if she made it 10 feet in front of her, he'd okay. have to turn and yeah. move I five mean, feet if, to attack her. And then that would prompt like an attack of opportunity. Also, the downside of the theater of a mind. So go ahead and take an attack of opportunity. I'll go ahead and grant that. Um, also, that that's not the way, like, being a stickler, Shane, that's not the way her uh, passive works. It doesn't actually okay. force him to attack the illusion. It actually gives him disadvantage against anybody but her. But because oh, she like did not attack from... him, I felt it was more thematically appropriate for him to attack this new ghost thing. Um, but go ahead and take an attack against him, and we'll say when he's like um, moving out of the way to get her, he moves I... out of your threat range. I don't have to attack him now. Like I, I like the way you explained it. Again, I'm still learning the mechanics of a lot of Which this. Which is why we're forgiving. This is like just for funsies, and honestly, you guys may need it depending on the rules. Yeah. Oh. So I'll attack him if he wants to move out of mine too, because I'm an attack range, right? Uh, no, not gonna give it to both. No. Okay, <laughs> hold on. One quick second. I got my dog out. She's crying. Yeah, no go for it. Uh, where, where are we at? One ten. Gonna end this thing anyways. You can have a long one. It's cool. Okay, so I am attacking? Yeah, go ahead. Roll your attack. Before I just, um, we'll say this happens Destroy. before his second attack. Not a great one. Five. Yeah, so he moves out of the way to go attack this uh, ring-esque girl, and you don't see it in time, so when you when you swing your glaive across, you just cut into his robe or his cloak. And so he shambles back around and um, is going to swing on you. Um, and I'm thinking a 24 is going to connect. Oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> Jesus. Um, alright, so... Oh no. It's never yeah, it's not like we're playing D&D or anything, god. <laughs> um, you're going to take... Math is hard. Uh, 13 bludgeoning damage as he brings this shovel... I have resistance to bludgeoning. Then you're going to oh, take yep. 7. Wait, how do you have... Oh, are you saying you went into rage when you used this ability? Is that the only time I have yeah, resistance yeah, against bludgeoning? Yeah. Yes. Okay, then ignore me. Learning. Well, I don't know that you... See, the question is about that ability because I didn't read it all the way. I don't know that you have to be in rage to use it. Um, but I'm okay with you popping rage because it just makes sense if you're going to be using one of the abilities of it. Um, I guess I could open up that last page and look at it. Yeah, they're they're it's all uh, rage related. Is it all? Do you I have think to it's be rage. rage to use it? Yeah, yeah then you're in rage. Yeah. You take seven damage. I don't know about this. Like, the whole goal is just to yeah. be fun, not like me kill you, because I could kill you. Like, that's all right. All right, you, minus you seven. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you're gonna take seven damage instead of thirteen. Um. So he like blinks you on the head real good though, and it is it is not a pleasurable experience as he does this. Whoops, wrong button. That's okay. Nothing bad happened. Uh, next is going to be Rowan. Uh, I'm gonna cast that vicious mockery again. 
Okay. Um, this is Mark Reed, and he's gonna do a wisdom save, right? Yep. Uh, I don't think a six is gonna do it. It super doesn't. Okay. Now what happens? Oh, okay, you would have to ask that, wouldn't you? You had an opportunity to go look it up last time. <laughs> look, it's super easy. You just have disadvantage on your next attack, and you take 1d4 damage. Okay, 1d4 damage. You tell me what that ends up being. It ends up being 3. Oh, 3 psychic damage, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The Owies are stacking up on this guy. Um, so he takes that damage, and uh, I mean, like, admittedly, he doesn't seem super phased by it. It's not meant to. So, but he has disadvantage on his next attack. That's always good. Sure does. Would you like to do anything else? Uh, I'm gonna bonus action, give Bardic Inspiration to Atlas. All right. So, what do you what do you sing to him to inspire him? He's not better than us. That's an interesting thought. I, w I really, your new goal for the next um, like month is to record these songs oh, that you're yes. making up. Um, uh, I, yeah, I need sure. to have at least eight. Yeah, bars. no, Alex, I, I will seriously help you with that. Me and Alex, uh, we were in a band. Uh, we are. When I was when I was younger, called Big Harry American Winning Machines. I was a songwriter. He was. Uh, he's an excellent guitarist. If those don't know about Alex. Um, so we'll, we'll sort that out for you for, for next session. So we need eight bars because if mm -hmm. anybody uses it, if they use eight bars, they're contractually obligated to pay us royalty fees. So let's just oh, get that yeah, out of the way. Oh, done. Um, yeah, that's super easy. That's like it, a man. rule in media, if you don't know it. It's um, pretty much already done. Also yeah, not a lawyer. We play Stuck in Hell. Um, okay, cool. So you have Bardic Inspiration channel. Atlas. Uh, next up on the chopping block, there is Mapri. I'm going to stab him. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So while I'm raging, let's roll for stabbing yep. against his AC. That's not great. That's a four. That's not gonna hit. I was gonna make say make sure you add whatever rage bonuses you have. Um, oh, they six. Apply. Sorry. Um, I mean, I don't I don't know that it's gonna help with that low. So yeah, you go to stab, and he brings that shovel, and you stab his the the the, sh the head of the shovel just dead on, and he just hard blocks it. It's a good durable shovel. Don't forget you got part of I'm taking notes. Well. <laughs> taking Atlas, notes. Atlas, are your shovels as strong as that? I lose the I lose the bardic inspiration. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, Demotivated. Uh, Kristoff, you're up. Uh, first thing, bonus action to Maypri. Don't stab Slash. He's got holes in him and stuff. Like uh, so you're gonna have an advantage on your next attack. Awesome. Um, and then uh, for my standard action, let's just pop off a good old-fashioned American Ray of Frost, right? Oh, I let's bring it back. Take let's take it back for the working person, right? The middle class. That's me. I'm the middle classiest. That's true. Um, so it's going to be 17 to hit. Uh, that's going to connect. And then we'll just get a little deed of damage. A little, uh, little something. That's a seven. Seven cold damage, please. I can make that happen. So, and as and his like, movement speed is. Okay, so um, he, he, as he's like blocking this uh, direct physical attack, he doesn't see the Ray of Frost coming. It just strikes him across the shoulders, and he takes seven cold hours, yeah? Okay, uh, next up is Atlas, bringing up the rear. What you got? Uh, I, I kind of see how strong this guy is. He's not going down, so I'm going to go rage mode. All right, bring it on. Uh, so got a Laria, uh, and got old Foxy in my hand, so I'm going to uh, attack, attempt to attack this guy. That's a 12 plus, it's 19. That's going to connect. All right, so let's do some work. D12. Uh, that is a 12. Plus Ouch. Alaria's one is a 13, plus uh, two, so that's 12, 13, that's 15, right there. Okay. Um, and then at the end of my turn, he has to do, uh, what is it? Yeah, he has to do a save. It is going to be a wisdom save. Yeah, I'm also going to get that sound effect out, too. Uh, okay, so wisdom saving through. Uh, that's super good, 16. 
Yeah, he's gonna be, but he's gonna take uh, half a two d six. Okay. He's gonna take four. That's nineteen damage. Nineteen. All right. So he took four more total. Okay. Cool. So yeah, you come at him just full on rage mode, <laughs> and you strike him across the chest with the blade, and following that blade up. The, the sheer speed and strength, these bolts of lightning slide off of you and bounce onto him. And it takes a lot of hours, but he's still standing strong. Like he's Correction, it's a 22. I'm, I'm my bad. I forgot the plus three in the sword. Plus the plus one. Excuse me? Why, why are you going to for, for my, um, I have, I have, I have proficiency. And it gives you plus three damage? Yes. That's Damn. pretty good. What? 1d12 plus three? And then yeah. plus Alaria gives me plus one because she's my cursed sword. Yeah, but no, no, no. But you already did the plus one, and then you just added three damage. The rage, rage was two, and then add three. Yeah, so I roll a natural twelve for damage. Plus my three gives me fifteen. So plus Alaria's one. We're just checking like this. Whatever proficiency you have gives you plus three damage to your attacks. Yes. Dang. Is that longsword proficiency or something? Or great it should be weapon? plus three to hit. Yeah. No, what is that? It's damage? plus five to hit. It's plus three to damage. What is this called? This is it's a it's a it's a great sword. Do you have? Thanks, I knew that. Um, what is the proficiency have, like... called? The feat or the ability? Uh, blade ability. mastery. Weapon. Blade oh. mastery. Thank you. Blade mastery feat. That's a UA feat. Um, I remember that one vaguely, but I was like, dang, that is super good. All right. Well, just, that's what it is, it is on the sheet because it adds because Blade of the mastery. You gain one bonus to your attack rolls with a weapon. On your turn, you can use a reaction to assume a parry stance, provided you have the weapon in hand. Doing so grants you a plus one. Blade mastery is what this is called. Mm -hmm. UA. I'm looking at UA, and it, yeah. you get one to attack rolls. You can use your reaction to do it a parry stance to get one to your AC, and when you make an opportunity attack with the weapon you have advantage on the roll are you sure it's blade mastery well because hold on let me just double check because i'm pretty sure i'm proficient in that with that weapon are they not proficient in the great swords i thought i read that you guys are making my doubt i mean i'm just thinking you it's something different than what you think it is but proficiency doesn't add to damage it only adds to hit the only other feat is fell handed you master the hand oh that's no that's great axe uh blade master is short sword long sword scimitar rapier and don't you add sword. strength on melee attacks yeah but that doesn't that has nothing to do with blade mastery no i'm, I'm just for some blade mastery doesn't exist yes it don't does. i get the plus it's three oh oh yeah because your no, strength I'm... Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. I get that. Blade Mastery was just a plus one to hit. I okay. didn't add... You... I... Not, not what you said. You said, oh, I have Blade Mastery add three damage to that. No, 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 no. I don't... Well, if I said that, I misspoke. Okay. Sorry. No. Cool. There's three proficiency. Alaria gives me plus one. Rage oh, gives no, no, me no. plus oh. two. Your proficiency... Is... All, right, all right, I see what happened. You said, I'm proficient with this weapon. I get plus three. I get my strength on melee were... attack. Yeah. I thought you were adding your... Okay, we're good. I see what happened here. Oh, my actual proficiency? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, uh, well, plus... But anyways, all right, so I'll edit all that shit out. 23. Uh, yeah, to... God, you're embarrassing me for our fringe. I was right. Yeah, maybe we didn't mind. come here to listen to us talk about well, rules. I mean, Super tactical. Right, <laughs> right is a strong <laughs> word for what you... What I'm you a want. strong orc. Um, anyways. So... I'm a strong so it's, uh, it's Wayland's turn now. Um... And he's gonna do so he um he reaches into his robe and pulls out one of these giant tombstones and he throws it in the middle of the group and i'm gonna need everybody to do a dexterity saving throw oh my god which isn't fine for the barbarians actually <laughs> well i don't know if you've ever had a level yet i oh, got yeah, 19. Uh, that's like a 24. Okay. Uh, 16. Okay. Chris 17. Tom. 17? Well, motherfucker. Okay, yeah. No, right, so, <laughs> you, you throw this, uh, he throws this tombstone in the center, and it shatters and explodes, and debris goes everywhere. We all take one step to the left, and we're fine. Yeah, and you, <laughs> you guys all literally step out of the way, and then none of you take damage. Hey! Uh, He's like, and now my final yep. move! My final move, yep. 
Okay, uh, that's, that's his bag. Uh, Rowan. Oh, uh, what? I was too busy celebrating. Shit. Um... So wow, attractive. You have four other turns to decide what you. Uh, I know. I did. You know what? I'm gonna cast Fairy Fire. Okay. Uh, walk me through what that does. Uh, Fairy Fire is a thing that doesn't really do a whole lot. I disagree, but all right. I mean, it does a lot, but here let me let me see. Um, I cast it with him in the center, and there's a 20 foot cube, and everyone has advantage against him. Yeah, and he can't go invisible if that's a thing. I'm pretty sure there's something to that that is not going to be well for your... Oh, oh, he's going to make a dexterity saving throw. Yeah, but so... Um... I really appreciate that we all know everything about our moves so well. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm really digging that. Um, okay. <laughs> Each object in a 20 feet... Uh, foot cube within range is outlined by blue, green, or violet. Any creature in the area when the spell is cast. Um, so, I mean, obviously you're just going to aim, do this. I'm going to help you out and assume mm -hmm. you're not going to hit your allies with this. Please don't. No, of course not. Well, not what you said. So, it, <laughs> in assuming that, let me just wait till, because this needs to be on record for all listeners. Chainsaw, I'm just going to say this. If you guys do not target your spells when they're area of effect, I'm going to assume that the target you pick is the dead center. center. Yeah. Fair? No. That's fair. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so but I'm going to assume this time Roan was ahead of the game and just aimed it out of the way. Okay, Sarity, save it through. Uh, no, that's not great. Uh, I can't imagine that passes. Um, so he's going to get the bad things, which is... Um, Everybody gets advantage. Everybody gets yep. advantage. Everybody gets advantage. Take oh, that, right. Shane. Now all your bonus actions are useless. Okay. Uh, what else would you like to do on your turn? Uh, I'm a bonus action. Give... You know what? Yeah, I'm going to give Kristoff Bardic Inspiration. You, I love that you have an ability to give it to all of them at once, but instead you used three separate die. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, that's fine. It's called action economy. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Um, I can only right. do that once Maybe a day. You've heard of it? That's true. That's fair. I I don't know anything about this game. And math is hard. Uh, Mapri, it's your turn. All right. So taking the advice that Kristoff offered, I'm gonna go ahead and slash um, okay. across his chest. All right. With advantage, please. With advantage. Yep. Because okay. uh, you, he's fair fired. 16? Uh, oh, yeah. no. Oh. What? Let's say that advantage was because of my bonus action, right? Let's say Aww. that one. Was yeah, that that's one. true. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, don't forget, you also have, uh, in, and I'll say this because you are new to it, you also have the Bardic Inspiration, too. Um, you yeah. can I don't use know that. what that means. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's why I say well, um, you have the choice before the results are determined on an attack, uh, ability save, and... Maybe one more thing. Damage roll? It's just bard do damage roll? Attack and damage roll because I'm a Valor Bard. Okay. So, so it's both. Basically attack, damage roll, and a spell save. You can roll a D6 to add to your score before you know the results. Oh, cool. So you roll I mean, 16. It... Do you want yeah. to do that or do you want I to would just love to. All right. No, wait, wait, hold, I mean, yeah, because I don't know what the AC is. I'm just going to go ahead and take advantage of this. All right. Plus two. So what did I? What was the number I gave you? A sixteen. Um, yeah. So it connects. Eighteen. <laughs> nice. How much damage do you do to this this guy? Ten. Ouch. All right. There so we nice. go. Putting in the hurt. Plus your two. Do you have your rage two added? Nope. Oh, so you know, Twelve. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you bring this sideways and you connect good, and you see. Uh, <laughs> A good piece of this robe uh, kind of fall away, and below you see this like mossy vine type monstrosity start being revealed as the robes start to fall down. Mm. And uh, next up, it, unless you have anything else you'd like to do on your turn, I don't think I have any like anything left. No, I'm good. Okay, so next up is Kristoff. Uh, 
Uh, as a bonus action, I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn to uh, Atlas, and I'm going to say, "Hit him hard, hit him fast." Uh, so that gives him advantage on his next attack, regardless of whether or not Fairy Fire persists. <laughs> if he has a way to remove debuffs, uh, you will not be affected. <laughs> okay. Uh, and and then I'm going to pull out my light crossbow. Okay. And I'm going to shoot him in his stupid face. Okay. And yeah. I'm going to burn the bardic inspiration as well. It's a D6, right, Alex? Yes. For now. Uh, okay, well, that's good. So that is a 10 plus 6 plus 3 is 19. I will say it hits. We'll just pretend. We'll just, we'll just, we'll just pretend. <laughs> um, yeah, and okay. to make believe. Yeah, so go ahead and roll that damage for me, please. Oh, and he's got um, he's got enemies around him, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and add my sneak, sneak attack to that, too. Sure, why not? Uh, so that's gonna... Oh, daddy, yes. That's gonna be 19 <laughs> points of damage. Whoa! Oh, Jesus! Bring in the heat, doing some mental math real quick. Okay, yeah, so you let loose this arrow, uh, this bolt from your crossbow, and it strikes true to his chest and takes lots of alleys. And he, he staggers uh, to his side a little bit as he takes that hit. Um, but he's, and he kind of gives you like, uh, he's, he's ready to go. Typical. So, hey, broken record. We've heard it before. Records don't exist. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Yep. Hey, broken <laughs> speech stone. We've heard it before. Nailed it. <laughs> so articulate. Love it. Uh, Atlas, your turn, bud. Uh, and, I, and I will just respond to Chris Huff and say, you got it. <laughs> and I'm going to swing again with uh, Alaria. Uh, that is 21. Okay. So that will do that. So roll damage. damage. Did you roll twice, Devin, for advantage? I didn't need to. Oh, yes. Yeah, I did. I super did. Um, thank you. Um, so that's a 7 plus, Alar- uh, plus the 3 I get. So that's 10. Plus Alaria's 1 is 11. Plus my rage is 2 more. So that's 13 total right now. End of my turn. You need, you need to do uh, actually deck save. Um... Eight. It's uh, 10. Uh, no, it didn't be it. So, four, six. That's another nine damage. Jeez. 21. Okay, so you come across him with Alaria, and as you do that, she's just screaming joy as you sh- strike across his chest. <laughs> and again, the lightning joy! bounces off you to the blade to him, and he kind of shudders backwards and is, is not in a good way. I like to imagine as a battle cry rather than just like, hey, Julie, she's like, joy! <laughs> yeah, uh, Wayland's up next. And he's going to just hate his life. He's going to go after Atlas. Mmm. Get some. So he's going to swing, and he's going to do. I don't think it's wild hits, does it? It does not. So the first one, he swings and he goes wide. Swing and a miss. And then the second one. Oh yeah, I think it's 22 is going to strike. Yeesh. That's with disadvantage. And he's going to do um, 12 bludgeoning damage to you. I will take half. Unless that is half. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, yes, that's how rage works. Um, okay, yeah. Know what I mean, you idiot. That's his bag. And, uh, Rowan, your turn. Oh, man. This is so un- unexpected. Um, Same turn. I every, get another every turn. Yeah. Oh. Re- me? I'm not used what? to being at the top of, of initiative. Uh, you know what? I'm going to stab him with the rapier. Ooh, okay. So you're going you're gonna to run up and go side by side with the, uh, the two barbarians and take a swing at him. I like it. Yeah, that sounds like the smartest thing I could do. <laughs> it, sounds like, it sounds like something Rowan would do. That's for sure. That's an 18. Did your chair say hello? That is a 19. It's a 
Nice. nice. It is a 19. You know what? Would you like to use or you don't have that? Huh? Yeah, I don't have Bardic. I, I give it to everyone but Everybody, me. Everybody, you. Um, yeah, that's going to connect. Um, so go yeah. ahead and, and tell me um, what that does. <laughs> damage. That wise. does. Not great damage, it's a six damage. But it's not bad considering who you are. Um, <laughs> That's a little hate. I'm a underrated well, compliment, yeah. yeah. No, it's Dwayne, super the true. Rude. I'm, I'm handy right. man. So I you do... run up and you stab into that mossy goodness and do six damage. I do six damage. All right, anything else? Um. Scott, did you use your bardic inspiration? You didn't have to, did you? You did? Oh, then I'm gonna activate my loot and give everyone wow. bardic inspiration. Everyone gets it. So you play this loot and everybody gets uh, bardic inspiration. Okay. Yeah, queue yep. up to the uh, the sound file for Through the Fire and Flames. Yes. No, please don't. <laughs> uh, you know, we did do that. I had to edit it out because of copyright infringement, so that was the there. Everybody heard bars. it. Just Seven bars. Yeah. Everybody we, was uh, Yeah, we super all heard it. Confirmed. Um, no, 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 no. It's still copyright infringement. You're just only required to pay after eight bars. Like, you still need permission to use it. You should go look up copyright law. No, yeah, like Dragon, 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 Dragon Force. Dragon Force. Dragon Force. Dragon Force. Dragon Yeah. Oh, that's, there's this one. Uh, anyways, uh, next is McCree. What you want to do? Okay, so the whole conversation kind of thing you told me about, so I can talk to one person and I can say, like. Well, you can say it out loud. You can choose to address one person, but you can say, like, hey, I'm going to do this, and then. But the first of those three get to do it. But if you want to direct it towards somebody, you absolutely can. But somebody else can still answer. Okay, so I'm going to ask you another question before I address um, the person. Can I do, like, a team um, attack? I love it. I want to know. I so love it. I want this so much. <laughs> I, give, I give it inspiration. I give it the lawful stupid inspiration because you're Yay! brave enough to ask for these Ooh. guys' help, which is... Possibly yeah, the worst thing to do, so let's hear it. Mm. Okay, so, I mean, I was focusing more on a, like, a kind of like a barbarian synchronized, um, maybe like a bit of a dance beforehand. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Are we talking yeah, about a few? Things? A little bit, yep. Okay. <laughs> Fingertips touch, there's like a bright light. Yes! Yeah, we, be we become. We become, because we're both in rage mode, we both become Mela. We're fretless. We're fretless. Yeah. I think Mela flows a little bit better. Yeah, I think Mela. Mela. Anybody who's listening, I now need fan art of what that looks like. Yeah. <laughs> it's mostly her. Art. It's mostly, so my height, my build, her color, and tiefling look. Your tusks. My tusks. And Alaria Foxwood. So like her. a seven foot beauty with horns. All about it. Let's do no, this, bro. No, no, no. It's it's it's, it's like a glaive. It's like a like a spear. Oh, uh, on the end of the spear. Oh, with Larry on the end. Oh, yeah. It becomes a glaive. Oh, I like that. that's amazing. Such an absurd oh. weapon. There's something absurd so about good. that. <laughs> Great to it's canon. It's canon. Yeah, it's canon. So how can I go about rolling? Um, like, am I just using like? Am I combining our stats? Just do it. D no, let's do it this way. D20 performance check with advantage? Yes. I also and have then, my, my D6. Yeah, everything you say, you have to say in use. <laughs> for the whole drag yeah. Text me right now. Come what you're say. I got 14 on, pers on performance. performance. Okay. Uh, Devin, I'm going to need you to do a performance check as well, right this second. Yes, Honestly, my Come bardic inspiration, up. if any time, just super <laughs> now the time yeah, to yeah. use it. I'm, I'm using They're it. They're so dancing! <laughs> In the middle of battle. Right, when it's a, a better appropriate okay. time. Uh, my whole goal was that they were within three of each other. I'm going to fucking give it to you. You guys are now <laughs> one person. I'm so loud. <laughs> you guys have now formed exactly what we've described <laughs> through the power of magic. I will say this, Kristoff, you now notice that they're wearing the ring. Ooh. Mm, what a twist. <laughs> and so I still now, like it. You're, so, you're now this beast. Um, you can attack twice. 
using uh, the greater. I will say this. Fuck it. Fuck it. This is great. One d twenty is your new damage die while what? in this form. What? Oh shit. We suit up, boys. Hold who's, on. Who's got the lower <laughs> yeah, HP? Everybody though? buckle in. Say again. Who's got the lower HP? Probably me. I've been hit. Uh, I have thirty-two. Um, so I forgot to fix my HP when I leveled up. Um, so I've got 19 hit points right now. 19 is your hit points. Okay. That is your, that you is your hit points, points That's together. pretty good. Yep. Yeah, D20 Write this down. Damage <laughs> this is so exciting. Now, here's the thing. So you don't get to attack twice in a turn, though. Got it. So it's, so okay. it's totally one per turn. So she gets to control the collective you this turn. And I'm gonna let her. Uh, I'm gonna let her have a turn because this is great, and I think <laughs> we're gonna need it. But there's double inspiration, right? Because they're two people. I still no, have it's one. Still one person. Yeah, they still have, they still um, have the one inspiration. It's, it's, it's a share. Okay. No, but that's shared, right? Like. Okay. okay. I don't care. Just whatever right. boy wants so, right now. Brad, this is too good not to let it play out. Okay, 17 against DC. That hits. Okay. So a D20. D20. Yep. Two. Twelve. Twelve. Okay, plus three for his proficiency. Like, I'm proficient with that weapon. And she, and You're she, both I proficient. It's a combination so, of the weapons. So, so I just blade. added... So add three more. You don't add... No, you don't add proficiency to damage. We just no, talked. that's what I'm saying. How, you add, add, add three for your strength. It's strength. That's what, what I meant. So strength, I'm proficient in a weapon, which both makes me... Three, right? Yes. Well, uh, she may not be. What's your strength what? Yeah. Three. All right, yeah. so you Plus add three. three. I'm not making it that much stronger. I'm already giving you a T20. So 15. 15 damage. Plus, the, plus the Laria. So 16? 16. So do we, do we get four plus both of our rages? Like that I would just make counted it, I mean, it as two. No, I'm not giving you like, double rage. Okay. Well. Okay, right. get out push, of here. You're getting greedy. That, okay. <laughs> but no, but the, but the thunder effect persists, right? In a moment, but I want to I want to talk about something. Only on his turn, though. That's his personality. Oh, I see. Oh, kind of like Vegeta, where like he's got like a little bit of like Vegeta, a little bit of Goku, like the cockiness, but still mm. that inspiration to want to do good. Okay. So <laughs> okay. I wish I had sound effects. So are you Vegeta for this. or are you Gogeta at this point? <laughs> well, with the dance, you'd be Gogeta. With the Patar earrings, you'd be Vegeta. You're right. You're that, that would <laughs> that's that's true. true. <laughs> this is perfect. Um, Super on board. Okay, so I you bring that. this weapon down across this thing's chest, and you just see moss and vines tear wide open, and it's a real bad thing in a real bad way. Um, that was awesome. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, Kristoff, <laughs> your turn. What you do? <laughs> yeah, down. how did you follow that what? up? I, <laughs> uh, here's the problem, man. I know what to do in my heart. And I have to trust my instincts. Give me that fucking ring! Yes. Yeah, I'm going to grapple check yes. against Gogeta. Yes. I love everything about this. I'm going to try to tackle you and take the ring. <laughs> Alright, is this going to be like a strength contest? It is. It's not great for me. <laughs> no. It's not great for me. Not, not, I don't know what you call a strong boy. Um, you get advantage on that, by the way, because you're in rage mode. That's still pretty good, 19. I only rolled nine. Did you roll, Can you, did you roll again for advantage? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 one. Yep. <clears throat> and use our bardic inspiration to go ahead and beat him if you need. <laughs> 17, uh, no, it's I, I, no, no, bardic inspiration, use a d6. I'm gonna use my bardic inspiration. Yep, okay. Before <laughs> I know the results, I don't Shane, don't ruin result. this for me. I wanna do a Kamehameha Blast with my lightning attack next. I don't, don't care. Do... I, I didn't I have you guys to my character. I love this. I quit. 20. Podcast is over. 20. What did you get? Bianca Shane. lied. Uh, 24. 24. Bianca okay. lied. So, so there is no conceivable <laughs> way that he overpowers them, but he runs up and Catches leaps us by surprise. on I just grab up and I jump and I grab the ring. Yep, and just snatches the ring off. Very golem like Do you bite your finger off as well? <laughs> no, nope. He snatches the ring off. Like... What do you do from this point? I run. <laughs> Which direction? Where? Uh, away. <laughs> into the mausoleum, into the graveyard. 
uh, into the graveyard. I want right. to be. You're, you're gonna I'm run gonna get a second opportunity. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he goes, ah, if I, can, I don't care. I got this shit. I mean, I gotta play my guy. I love it. I love it, dude. 11. Does that connect? No. Okay. All right. So you, you do I'm this, you jump, and then you run 20 feet past everybody because that's your remaining movement speed. It looks amazing. Devin, we come to your turn and you fall apart. No. <laughs> this is dumb. This is the dumbest just, game I've ever played. I didn't know that was gonna happen. I didn't know the ring was the magic. I one. yell to him, "Give me the ring, please, for one turn." It's your turn. You're, you guys are now sitting together, both kind of drained, um, but you're at your stats that you were before. Um, what next, Devin? I attempt to do the dance again without the ring. Okay. <laughs> I'm right there with you, so when we're up, uh, roll. Okay. Roll, roll, roll performance check. The only way this works without the ring is if you have the same roll. Oof. Seven. Oh, that's a one in 40 chance? Yeah. I mean, eight, They text each other really quick. Be bad. But if they're way off. I got a seven. Eight! Oh my god, we're so oh, close. Bardic inspiration. Oh, look, it's a one. Oh, it really is a one. <laughs> okay. It really All right. is a For one. For one turn only, you guys are able to put it back together. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's fine. That's all I need. Man, I, I, look, I gave the I gave the results up front. I can't be mad at that. Oh, my gosh. The fates. All these crappy rolls are working in my favor. Okay, here we go. So you said for attack. Yeah, yeah get to one on Bart Inspiration. That's 17. That's going to hit. Um... So D20, so using D20 for attack? Yep, for damage. For You always sorry, use D20 yes. for attack. All right, that's 15. Okay. Plus the three for my strength. All right, more so roll that's 18, but Gloria is 19. Dex save was good, so he passes that, so 19. So plus two for rage mode, 21. Uh -huh. uh, that's that, and then at the very end, I'm gonna pull Laria back in the inner thing. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my hands together. I'm gonna pull my arms back, and I'm gonna blast forward my uh, my Ciara okay. into this guy, and right. he has to do a deck save. He passed. Okay, so he's just gonna take half of whatever yep. I'm about to dish out. That's a one, and uh, that's five. So he takes what two? I guess one it gets five, less. He would take three, but math is. So is it, is it more up? Well, if you split it, does it take less or more? Well, it's combined. Five. You combine the total damage because you roll two d six. He doesn't take one d six and then one d six again. No, I know. I saw, it's a total of five. What I'm saying is. Oh, I thought you said it was one and five. Level. My bad. So it's yeah. it, it, He takes two. Um. So he takes twenty one total. He's so you come across him tearing up more vines this command command may blast to his chest he's tattered and just laying not laying but like kneeling down real bad groaning huffing and puffing mapri uh, excuse me mapri and atlas you both hear this like panting in your head this <sighs> kill and it is super good <laughs> it is uh, Wayland's turn, Oof. and he's going to throw a tombstone directly at um, Mela. Is that what we decided? That's yep. where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm gonna need you guys to do a dexterity saving throw. I say you guys. Um, let me just do this. Maypre. Nineteen. That's pretty good. Ali, Kumbaya. Okay. Ali, Kumbaya. <laughs> Dodge that shit like it's nothing. You, you guys are going to take seventeen bludgeoning damage. Uh, except that gets halved, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Twenty-two bludgeoning damage. So you take eleven bludgeoning damage. A piece, or just like, do we split the eleven amongst one another? You guys are at eight HP. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot we have the nine. Okay. So you guys are looking worse for wear. Rowan, your turn, brother. Oh, what do man. you do with everything that you've <laughs> just witnessed in this six <laughs> second period? I cast Healing Word. 
the, the only best. time he ever heals ever is going to oh, be really? this one moment. I oh, super he... heal when it... <laughs> he heals every now and then. He heals whenever something goes down. He goes, oh, down. That's uh, true. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I have something for that's, that. That's a seven. It helps. All right, All right so you guys are back up to 15. <laughs> and uh, next is, if you're done, it's uh, May Pre or May Lost turn. Mm-hmm. And you, you kind of feel um, the fusion dance kind of falling apart, but you have your turn. Ooh, okay. I just want to point out, boys, this only in this weird world is uh-huh. this okay. <laughs> Future no, that's podcasts, that's fine. Yeah. there will not you. be fusion yeah. dance between you guys. <laughs> It was just too good Dwayne, to pass up. Thank you. Late birthday gift. I appreciate it. <laughs> I would like to grapple Bo Shambles. Okay. Yay! All right. So I don't actually know what the grapple rules are. I just you, know it's something I want to do. You roll strength advantage. Test. Yep. You okay. roll strength advantage. He has to contest with strength or dexterity. I can tell you which one he'll probably be using. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't do well. Uh, I don't think a 14 is going to win. You get advantage, Two. so I can't oh, imagine it's going to go bad. 14, 15, 16. Yeah, you win. So he's okay, super 16. grappled. All right, what are you, what are you going to do with that? Suplex. I don't know what that move is. So, okay, what a grapple is. This is just super. This is just super flavor. Instant to Kinkai's planet, we go. Um, yeah, he can go explode there. What grapple does in D&D, all it actually does <clears throat> is allows you to reduce his movement speed to zero, essentially. Um, and then if you were to move away, you get to drag him. Um, so there's that. But grappling is really just holding somebody in place. But if you want to make it into something else, shit, we've already done fusion dance, so I can't even imagine. Flavor that up. I would like to tear his head off. Fuck it. Roll a strength yeah, saving good. or strength <laughs> yes. check with advantage. Yeah. That's a good roll. Uh, 15, 16, 17. 17? Oh, fuck it. You, he's worse for air anyways. Um, you crush his skull. Like, and so you two. go to rip it off, you just, you feel that it's not pulling, and so out of anger, you just crush, and he crumples to the ground. Beautiful. And that's where that combat's is- gonna end. Um... And I can't say anything for you, Maypree, because frankly, you're not in our d d universe. Everyone else gets 1,800 experience. Whoa! <laughs> That's like numbers. Yep. I can't imagine Victoria would love us if she, you were like coming back from the podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm Welcome back, experience. overpowered. So, hi, you guys. Why are you guys so weak? Yeah. yeah. I feel so strong. Yeah. Okay. I once was a seven foot man. <laughs> That's a good day. So let's talk about how this resolves because not how I expected this in any what? way, shape, or form. Which part? Just period. <laughs> All of it. Period the end. I've learned that I should not plan these things out, that I should just have bullet points because my plans just get shit on. And that's fine, because this was amazing. But here's what's gonna happen. When Waylon crumples to the ground the world kind of fades away and Maypri you go home you go back to your world whether that's a dream or however you want to do that for your character that's you whether it's just not canon at all for you that's totally cool but you is is there a moment in which the world is fading and we can kind of see like we feel the tug to our I was I want to I would like to say some yeah do you Maypri keep those horns and slicks back Show them what style is. Yeah, you too, bro. I'll say, uh, Maybri, you should have won that arm wrestling competition we had. You are the only other barbarian I, I will consider equal out, to me. I want to point out what is actually happening because they're still in fusion dance. It, they're talking to themselves. He's talking to himself. <laughs> I like, I, can, I like picturing that. It's just yep. kind of like you turn your head one way to say something that I'm going to respond yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I think I should have won that arm wrestle too, but you were badass as heck, so it works out. Ah, uh, thank you. Can it actually be half of us, like a Joker type? I mean, uh, yeah, exactly. Type thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I like the full, like, 
for actual the, the big combo. Air. Yeah, yeah, that's better. <laughs> I'll sketch it out later. We'll see how it turns out. Please, oh, I cannot wait dude. for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So as the world starts to fade away, bye, uh, Rowan. <laughs> bye. I'm still super jealous of your hair because I have the crown. Had to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so as, as you fade away, you guys um, return, passed out um, on the next to the wagon. Sorry, the crown Rowan is gone. Uh, Devin, you're just the simple orc that you were. No longer this orc tiefling monster that you have experienced and remember. And <clears throat> Christoph, you wake up with a ring on your hand. And that's where we're gonna end this episode. Yay! Yay. But I want that fucking ring. I'm angry about <laughs> that ring. <laughs> I, really, I really expected Kristoff or Shane to be like, no, I just want to say one more thing, and he'd be like, I hold my hand up and be like, I got the ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll keep that to myself. I'm the deal. <laughs> wow, what a great adventure we had, boys. Yeah, man, yeah. what a, a crazy thing that happened. Anyway, back to our adventure, like, nothing changed. Yes. You come with me. <laughs> Whisper to your hand. I love that. And Shane, I'm going to send you um, stats on that item later, because that's an actual magical item for you. Nice. Uh, that was super good. Bianca, that was amazing. I cannot believe we did uh, DPC Fusion Dance. I also <sighs> did not honestly expect it to go the way it did with everybody <laughs> accusing you <laughs> and it was like oh no i gotta get them off this track or this is gonna go oh, real so it wasn't her fast. like i really thought i still she had the ring her. she's super I had the ring. She was just hanging yeah. out my hair yeah she had the ring it's not, it's not good enough my scalp massage wasn't, wasn't for me. now you weren't on par it's very <laughs> refreshing though <laughs> So thank you for letting us do that. Like, I was worried that it was going to be a little too out there, uh, but I appreciate the leniency. I mean, lawful stupid, right? Like, it's in the uh, title. Yeah, it's in the title. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, we're going to do our outro kind of thing, which is usually pretty good. Is there anything you guys want to say other than, oh, wait, we have a thing now. We have a Patreon. If you enjoyed um, this weird DBZ kind of thing, um, you should go check that out. We have rewards and junk and it's worth doing <laughs> what yeah i'm i'm really <laughs> um so, so we have a patreon you should go sign it out uh, i'm also going to uh, before the boys do their typical nonsense i'm going to give uh bianca a platform to say as much as she wants about her podcast or anything that she wants to plug now's the time to do it I don't have anything prepared. Um, so yeah, so my name is Bianca Zelda. You can find me on pretty much any social media platform, mainly Twitter and Instagram. Um, I'm a player in the Broadswords. Uh, we're a all-female D&D podcast that focuses on inclusivity, inclusivity uh, within the gaming table. Um, we are part of a lot of groups that support um, marginalized groups, so we like to support that a lot. Um, we also have a Patreon. That's fun. You can win really shitty doodles um, from me. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the patreon things um but i'm definitely I'm gonna have to draw them. out um the mela uh combo and we'll see what we do with that yes oh my god that's amazing <laughs> thank you that. so much for that Maybe. yeah i i, I do want to say if you haven't listened to broadswords uh podcast they take themselves they take themselves a little more seriously than we do they have a much better narrative um i like to say as far as um we kind of shit on everything and joke about everything. So if if our crude, brass, uh, crass behavior is not your style, A, why are you listening? B, if you're looking for a little bit of change of pace, uh, Broadsword is a really good way to go for that. They're great. Please Please all of you are yeah, super good. Aw, thanks, guys. Uh, anything else, boys, before we close this out? I'm going to sleep real good tonight. I know what you're going to dream of. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I just want to say thanks everybody for listening. Thanks everybody for all your continued support on the socials. And I love this game. It's a good game. Yeah, like you guys are cool, but no, like people, thanks for coming on and like adding some kind of <laughs> absurdity. Uh, you, 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 you class, yeah, the joint. yeah, class, yeah. Class yeah. Joint, right? so, very much for so. sure, for sure. If you ever want to go visit any more graveyards, I'm always free. 
Oh, for sure. <laughs> this is the start of a, of a 15 part series where we just go to different graveyard metaverses. <laughs> Fight it. all the gravekeepers. It's good. We love it. Uh, uh, rate us on iTunes five stars if you feel so inclined. Uh, apparently, that's a really good thing, and we have never liked to ask for that. Yeah, Since, and if like, you don't, fuck one. you. I mean, well, no, maybe not. Uh, well, well, no, well, for sure. Anyways, for have a nice sure. day. Congratulations. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.